Okay, so we are on chapter two, page number thirty-nine of the shift by Dr. Wayne Dyer. It's point number two in chapter two. Who I am is what I do. On the PDF, it is page thirty-seven. Two. Who I am is what I do. Early in life, we learn that we what we do and how well we do it can be used to define us. in a favorable way she actually grabbed my finger and she's only 6 years old a uh, 6 hours old he made eye contact with me he's so alert she picked up her toy and held it at 3 months he took his first step she said her first words there are thousands of things like these that earned us praise and let us know how special and wonderful we are This is all the work of the ego striving to direct us. We learn that doing things, especially if we do them earlier and better than others, is rewarding. We learn to be more of a human doing than a human being who just has to be. A human doing is evaluated on the basis of what he or she does and how it stacks up with all of the other doers. I am not intending this observation to be critical or judgmental. I only want to point out that having a ambition to be a doer was a top priority in our developmental years. So okay, so this is a problem that is there. I I consider it a problem that parents and elders are always making comparisons between children, and in my view, it's little squint because someone may be good at something. and someone else may be good at something else so now if i am going to make a comparison it automatically puts a person down who may be talented in something else uh, vis a vis someone uh, someone who's talented in let's say someone is talented in singing the other person may be talented in cooking now if we make a comparison between the two of them in the act of singing then naturally the guy who can't sing but can cook will be put down so all of us have our own propensity okay the idea is to be able to figure out what our propensity is and then channelize our life towards that particular activity or that particular thing now again over here i'd like to say that most of us you know when we are not good at something we attempt to work harder at that something to make it better okay but we do and in the process we lose focus on what we are good at and that again creates a problem for us because we are working hard on something that we don't have a propensity for and ignoring something that we have a propensity for so then that becomes a uh, it, it, it's it's a counterproductive thing according to me with each task that we mastered such as crawling walking talking becoming potty trained riding a tricycle and then a bicycle and learning to tie our shoes we took on an identity that told us when you do things and do them better and sooner than your counterparts then you have value we were rewarded for our accomplishments with praise candy money or whatever our particular family used in order to reward us so again crab mentality get ahead of the other guy all the time competition which instead of cooperation we are always taught competition again i see a need to point out that none of this reinforcement for performing is bad it simply teaches the aspiring human to believe the ego's personalized message of you are what you do which is blatantly false you are not what you do if you never did a thing in your entire life you'd still be a spiritual being having a human experience rather than the other way around so what are we associating our sense of identity from it's always been from the external world from the material side of things rather than the internalized the internal growth the internal uh, state of equanimity which is which is something that we all are is just that we've put our belief system we've got we've been educated from childhood to go into a certain belief system and that is what actually creates the problem 
if you let go of your belief systems and allow things to happen then you'll see the magic will start taking place uh, uh, jyoti do i have permission to share your example yesterday's what you told me jyoti yeah yeah we are okay so now jyoti called me yesterday she's on this call right now and she is telling me that i don't know what's happening to me i have no thoughts in my head and i i'm i'm thinking it's a problem so i i told her what are you saying it's a problem most meditative practices are attempting to take you to the state where you have no thought when you talk about mindfulness mindfulness is what have no thought when a pebble drops into a still pond you can see all the ripples when a pebble is thrown into a sea you can't see anything so i am operating with a stillness of mind and she was considering it a problem so i asked her two questions uh, is everything around you happening the way it needs to happen number 1 number 2 are you less irritable and you are more at peace with yourself and to both the questions she answer, answered yes jyoti can you confirm right there okay now what is happening now i we've got so used to having thoughts all the time that when i go into a thought of into a space of equanimity when i go into a space of th- stillness i cannot tolerate it anymore why because it's an unknown we've never been in that state of consciousness but that is the state of consciousness that we need to aspire for okay so when it says over here if you did nothing in your entire life you'd still be a spiritual being having a human experience rather than the other way around so that state of stillness is what we actually are unfortunately we've been told ambition try strive we have to be better than the other guy so we are constantly running today in the i'm just going little off track but today in the shift tatva he gave a nice example we constantly say that look at the pattern if there's a pattern if something keeps repeating in your life you need to pay attention he may, he gave an analog of a record player or a cd player which gets stuck so every time it gets stuck you'll go in the same round and round so most of us have got stuck like a record player in our lives you're doing the same thing over and over and over and over again not realizing where we are coming from or where we are going so when we we are most of us are stuck in those patterns we need to transcend those patterns and that can only happen with awareness and by awareness has two aspects one is experiential and the other is knowledge once we have these two then we can transcend it okay and get out of our patterns again i feel a need to point out that none of this reinforcement for performing is bad it simply teaches the aspiring human to believe the ego's personalized message of what you are what you do which is blatantly false you are not what you do if you never did a thing in your entire life you'd still be a spiritual being having a human experience rather than the other way around ego craves confirmation of our value through indicators spirit operates on a totally different basis whom is beyond ego as the spiritual entity known as emmanuel says your mind does not know the way your heart has already been there and your soul has never left it welcome home so see your mind is very much engaged with the material aspect of things your heart is more holistic okay so again it's the concept of the left brain and the right brain the left brain is more logical the right brain is more holistic okay it takes the gestalt it takes the feel of the entire thing it's more related with emotions and naturally your soul has always been home it is always connected the point is that because most of us as a society has become so left brain oriented that we first of all don't connect with the emotional side of things which is the right brain and next we do not connect with our inner self that deeper state of our own consciousness which is totally jacked in with whatever is now when we still our minds that is when like hemi singh what hemi singh does for us is it starts making the left and the right side start working together they start working in coherence they start working in uh, in cooperation with each other and that is what shifts our state of consciousness to touch that inner state of ourselves so as jyoti 
said he, when she said that I, my mind has become still so in the stillness is when you find that inner connection and that is what will take us home into that altered state of consciousness our early teaching convinces us that who we are is defined by our accomplishments our educational system emphasizes accomplishment reinforcing the idea even more no gold star is easily interpreted as no value is a person when we fail a test our sense of self is a feeling of failure and such ego strengthening notions become our reality from preschool through graduate school the messages are similar we are defined by how well we do if we don't do well we are labeled un labeled underachievers the concept of ambition as an indicator of how much worth we have both in the eyes of our fellow humans and even in the mind of god is cemented firmly into our consciousness so we are constantly striving okay not to better ourselves within ourselves but we are in constant competition with the external world and every one of us is different right so every one of us will work and see and perceive things differently but we are constantly labeled and then because of that labeling we create uh, lots of problems are created for all of us these ideas carry over into every aspect of our developing ego the popular saying winning isn't everything it's the only thing makes losers out of 50% of competitors since every competition that has a winner must also have a loser in all areas of life whatever we do tends to define our worth the artist whose portfolio is judged inferior to another's often feels a loss of value as a human being the singer who doesn't make it to number 1 in some category feels that he or she is worthless so again we are constantly judging we are constantly evaluating and naturally if there's a winner there's a loser now in that society what i told you all that, that robert uh, holbrook was talking to us about in south america where they were in constantly in a state of f12 there was no competition so everyone was a winner there is no question of winning and losing in that state of consciousness when we are going into transcendental states there are no winners and losers there is only learning there's only growth there's only uh, experiencing which is there and again the the way i look at it the journey to the goal in my view is more important than the goal itself and let me tell you in most cases you actually enjoy the journey more than once you've reached the pinnacle then what next okay so the journey is what is important but society as a whole has made that pinnacle winning becoming better than the other having more than the other that has become our trend that has become our mantra ego training continues into adulthood often eradicating any self concept based on our divinity as a piece of god who came from non doing and is headed back to non doing ego training contributes to a self concept that makes us shrivel into a feeling of insignificance at our meager portfolio in contrast to those who have achieved more the truth is that we don't have to do a thing in order to validate ourselves as worthy and valuable had we done nothing but just be god like we'd fulfill our own dharma ironically we would most likely have created a larger and more impressive resume so now what happens most of us are in resistance constantly i can't i won't i will not why should i it is not my job you get that we are constantly rejecting whatever the universe is putting in front of us constantly we are rejecting it if we could just connect into the flow and accept what the universe is sending sending to us or making available to us and take up the challenge to do whatever it is throwing up for us we will find as he says over here most likely have created a larger and a more impressive resume and when you are operating from that state of consciousness 
then the ego will get dropped automatically let me tell you i'm telling you this from experience when you are just getting into the flow the ego will automatically drop but when you say i am doing it that becomes a huge problem because your every action becomes effortful it doesn't become effortless okay plus what happens is when you are putting in the effort you want a return it becomes a transaction but when you are doing it effortlessly then there is no transaction involved we are doing it because you are happy doing it so automatically your efficiency levels will start to go up at this very moment i am right writing without doing that's right i simply allow ideas to come through me and onto this page i'm not busy writing trying struggling working or any other doing i'm simply letting go and letting god just as i do with my heart my lungs my circulatory system and everything else that the physical me comprises so now most of see today we don't have control over 97% of what is happening in our body but it is happening the moment you attempt to start taking control things actually may go out of control so who are we literally i'm telling you who are we to look and think that we can control things which are happening ar around us now just look at this covid situation can you control it or if there is a uh, if there is a, uh, a cyclone can you control control it so we think that we are in control but actually we are not in control so the more we jack into the flow the better off we will all be and that's exactly what he's saying here i am writing without doing so he is not doing he is allowing it to happen through him so he's 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 just becoming an instrument of that universal consciousness to manifest whatever the universal consciousness wants to manifest which is in the form of this book i let myself be not by thinking big and setting gigantic goals but by recalling lao tzu's advice in the tao teaching okay now this becomes important most of us are told you have to set a goal you have to set this you have to set that but when you get into the flow you will automatically be directed to the right steps to be taken to achieve what you are meant to achieve having said that yes you can have an intent but that intent what we have understood in the monro process at least you go into a higher state of consciousness and let that intent go i with the caveat this or better so once you've let it out into your into that expanded state then you don't think about it again just like the farmer when the farmer has planted the seed the farmer is not going to go and dig up the seed every time to see what's the growth if you do that then you will find that this plant will not grow at all so you have to plant the seed and then after that let whatever needs to manifest to manifest this is exactly what andrea in her video when we were watching her video she said that i really love the click out state the click out state is the state in which that you plant the seed and then the universe downloads data she called it the rot r o t e resonant organized thought energy and all of us get these rots let me tell you the only point is number 1 we are not aware of them and number 2 we don't pay attention to them the moment you allow them to unravel things will start to unravel for you um i have a question here yeah uh, she does so uh, when we are saying that we don't uh, we don't have to focus on it or you know visualize it but there is one school of thought says that you know you precisely think about it suppose uh, like you have to buy a house okay i remember in the earlier talks also like you know that if you have to buy a house you see each and every detail of it right Yeah. and you intend it like that and you keep on seeing it because then it the image becomes now here this concept is slightly different right it says that you just think about it leave it and then focus on the other thing so, yeah, so how... i'm not saying i'm not saying don't think of the detail of it okay right what i'm saying is go into an altered state of consciousness hmm. intend exactly what you want okay with the caveat this or better yes and then throw it out into that expanded state of consciousness 
allow okay. those guys there to manifest whatever is necessary for that manifestation to take place okay you are you okay. got it yeah Is yeah that, yeah correct now suppose correct. you are focused only on that one thing in your life and you're right. constantly thinking of that yes. is that the only thing that is there in your life or there are many other things happening in your life yeah there are a lot of other things which are happening what that so now if i'm going to only focus on that house then i'm forgetting my studies i'm forgetting looking after my children i'm forgetting to eat food i'm forgetting to uh, go to sleep i'm forgetting to go to the toilet and have a bath i'm forgetting to do so many other things if i'm one pointedly focused only on that house correct that's right so yeah if if i can use the process of the expanded state to mm. achieve whatever i want to hmm and also be doing everything else at the same time what is the problem yeah okay got it now when you are looking so it need it, not always so when you are looking at it from the point of view of the secret the book right one of the authors was joe vitali the guy who wrote zero limits along with uh, right. dr this thing uh, you, are you getting that so in in yeah. zero limits he says that what we wrote in secret i i am rebutting it yeah you understand because yes, yes, like yes. in the secret what do they say that you want that motorcycle put a picture of that motorcycle yeah go to the go, go to the store and see the motorcycle constantly correct. think of the motorcycle absolutely correct now that's what right what are you doing yeah. now what are you doing you are restricting yourself to only that particular motorcycle yeah but ho sakta hai ki the universe wants to give you a better motorcycle or the universe yeah. wants to give you a, a mercedes benz instead of a motorcycle hmm correct so now what have you yes. done you have you have put a boundary right you have put yeah, a correct term that i only want this yeah correct so then what are you doing you are cutting your own feet correct because you could have got, got something it, yeah. better better yeah correct okay you get that so even when we make affirmations it has to be with with the higher good better or higher exactly good. that's why for the higher good for the greater good yeah this yeah. or better we must put mm. these caveats in all our prayers we must put it mm. you understand it. because yes. from our yes, yes, small yes. state of consciousness we really don't correct. know what that expanded states is looking for yeah correct now correct. This, yes this is also evident when we are sending healing to anyone mm. okay now you mm. yes yeah. suppose someone is sick got it now the basic idea would be that that person should get well yes correct you get that but then how yes. do you know that experiencing that illness is not for the greater good of that person person correct that's right yes or for the greater good of the other family members because yeah. many times what happens when a family is totally split up one person falls sick and everyone comes together yeah right so how do we know right from our small yeah. state correct. of consciousness so we need to get into correct. that expanded state and allow that expanse to work so when jyoti told me that i'm going i can't think there is no thought i was so happy mm. because it it just told me that yes what we are doing is working right are you got it yeah yes i got it yeah yeah, yeah. thank you the practice of the tao involves daily diminishing decreasing until nothing is being done when nothing is being done ironically nothing can be left undone so now this is important the point is that when you think you are doing that means you are putting effort into it but if something is happening then there is no doing so what is it the practice of tao involves daily diminishing decreasing till nothing is being done so nothing is being done it is happening when nothing is being done ironically nothing can le be left undone and believe me when i tell you this i am experiencing this i i i have stopped forcing myself to do anything i allow it to happen and when it needs to happen the thing happens and i trust that process 
so internally what is happening to me personally is i am being stable inside i am not getting hassled that okay i have to do this 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 i have clearly gone into a state of consciousness where i trust that whatever needs to happen i will be directed and told that okay now you do this and i just follow that particular instruction and i find everything automatically starts getting done true mastery of the world <coughs> true mastery of the world can be attained by allowing things to take their natural course it can never be attained by interfering so again when we are jacking into the flow we constantly go into a state of consciousness of allowing rather than interfering with our small mind okay again i'm repeating can't won't will not do it all these words are only putting you on the left side of the grid they are pulling you down when the universe is giving you something to do it is going to happen just allow it to happen stop interfering stop creating roadblocks unnecessary for yourself and everyone around you yes this is indeed paradoxical and it points exactly to the way that all creation takes place god is doing nothing yet leaving nothing undone if we dissuade ego by scorching it with inattention we accomplish what we came here to do and be by being rather than doing our fingernails grow our food digests and our hearts beats without our doing something to make those things happen so everything movie, everything is happening okay how much are we actually controlling the plants are growing the birds are flying the bees are pollinating everything is working what are we doing you understand but we in a in a small state of consciousness have such a inflated value that we have given to ourselves okay that it's absolutely pathetic let's put it that way in the movie the shift david the frustrated filmmaker illustrates what i am writing about his character acts out problems that arise with his ego belief i am what i do if he can't make his movie he loses not only his happiness but his soul as well it's only when david begins to let go to take a few moments to be present in the present and let in the ideas that are being taught in the film that the magic begins to take hold i repeat what will become a familiar theme if we are what we do then we don't or can't we aren't i think we need to pay special attention to this point okay so if i am not doing what i think i need to be doing again with that small consciousness and i can't do it then i am i am creating a problem for myself so we become our biggest critics we become our biggest judge and we are constantly belittling belittling ourselves instead of being compassionate and loving to ourselves and if we are not compassionate and loving to ourselves how can we be compassionate and loving to anyone else it is literally impossible most people raised in the modern world are skeptical of doing nothing we are weaned on ambition and particularly the doing more expression of it yet we need to consider the very real and tr troubling aspects of believing that we are what we do in the film david loses his sense of self worth because of ego's teachings he becomes depressed and feels totally lost all because he's bought into ego's teachings that he is defined as a worthy individual on the basis of what he accomplishes for david then not having the film project he wants causes him to feel that he is not a person of value it's a false conclusion based on living from the false self so now he is he is totally equated his success his state of being his state of self worth with that one project okay 
now if that project doesn't happen then he is worthless and if it happens and it's a success then he is worthful or he is uh, he is worth something but how does he know even after he gets the project it will not be successful then again he becomes worthless so what is happening he is putting his happiness into someone else's hand and that is the worst thing that we can do to ourselves is putting our happiness in someone else's hand for david then not having the film project he wants causes him to feel that he is not a person of value it's a false conclusion based on living from the false self this is the danger of listening to ego rather than our authentic self every time we feel as though we failed we place our worth as a human being in jeopardy if we're sick or injured and can no longer perform according to our standards we also become candidates for depression or are susceptible to a multitude of physical ailments so now this is important okay if we are not doing we start feeling worthless because that is what has been ingrained into our system that if i am not doing something then i am absolutely useless but having said that the pauses which are there that introspection which is required is extremely important i have seen in my own life there's a growth and then you'll come to a plateau that plateau is extremely important because that is where the assimilation of in, that entire growth that you've had takes place but at that point if you start feeling depressed and worthless you again kill yourself you start becoming judgmental of yourself now if you can tolerate that plateau state and just be with whatever is happening then the next growth path will take over if you don't tolerate it then you fall back so this becomes important that we have to understand that there is a up and down we will be active for a certain point in time and then we will settle down then again we will be active and then we will settle down a straight line growth never takes place anywhere and it's always better to have those ups and downs for your growth rather than a straight line because if you're growing in a straight line when the fall comes you will not be able to tolerate it like this when you grow and then you come back down then again you grow you are used to that downturn you are used to that downturn and that's what creates the foundation for your next growth as we go through the process of watching our body age naturally we'll notice a gradual lessening of our physical skills it's highly likely that the members of the generation behind us will even surpass our achievements which happens routinely in competitive sports such as swimming and running so now ultimately again, there is something called the morphogenic field okay now whatever all of us have done that is all registered in the morphogenic field this term was coined coined by rupert sheldrag who said that everything that is ever done is there in the field and we can access it we have the capacity to access it so they did an experiment with the uh, times crossword now of course everything has gone digital but at that time when they did that experiment i have spoken about this before again but let's say they made someone do the crossword now normally when the times crossword came out he would take maybe 10 minutes to do it now let's say uh, he was given the same crossword 7 days after it was previously published he would do that same crossword in maybe 3 minutes now he's not seen it before right but it's there in the morphogenic field they did it with rats they put rats into mazes and they made the rat go through when the first rat went through maybe he took 10 minutes time and then as he started going through the time dropped now they made another rat in another space go through the same uh, maze and after this rat had done it few times that rat did it much faster even in the first time than the first rat did it in the first time so everything is there in the morphogenic field so as we are growing we are seeing that our children are becoming more and more intelligent than us like when we started doing it remote pakadna hi nahi aata tha i mean till the age of 12 13 we literally never use the remote now if you see children of 3 or 4 years are being able to use the remote so there is a growth through the morphogenic field 
and all records will ultimately get broken at some point or the other because always there will be someone who will do it better. Ultimately. Ultimately, no longer able to do be to be the doer that we once were. It seems, ultimately, it seems that our worthiness as a human doing has evaporated. That scenario is only true if we listen to a false master, our ego. I have reached the state age that many refer to as retirement time, but I have practiced the scorching of my ego in this regard for several decades. I am not my work. I am not my accomplishments. I am not my resume. I live, breathe, and work from my authentic self. As I've said here and in many of my previous writings, I do not do writing. I am writing, and writing is me. I simply follow Lao Tzu's advice to be lived by the great Tao that animates all things by doing nothing. This being the case, how is the concept of retirement even possible? How can I retire from who I am? And who I am allows this writing and speaking and everything else I do to take place. So now what is happening? He is taking his happiness into his own hand. He is allowing things to happen. He is not making them happen. So he is being who he is. If I can totally associate with what I am and that thing is within me, then I'm not dependent on something else outside me to create my happiness. And then when I'm me, I'm being my authentic self, there is no question of retiring. How can you retire from who you are? It is impossible. So the idea here now is to actually jack into the flow to be able to understand what you are and then do that to the best of your ability. Again, when we come back to the four agreements, be impeccable with your word. Do not take things personally. Do not make assumptions and do your best. When we do these things and with the four S's, these three or four rules, if we just look at in our life, we'll find that we will be able to jack in easier. We will be happier and we will be more efficient in whatever we are doing. What happened, Shimangla? Shimangla, we've you've stopped the sharing. Shimangla, you one second. One, one second. second. One second. The net had dropped. The net had dropped. You're on two equip two uh, things now. Yeah, now. My advice on relinquishing ego's assumptions that we are what we do is to live from our most authentic self. Then when we're able, we must replace ambition with meaning. When we make the shift to meaning, we see the absurdity of ever being able to retire from whom we are. So now what is happening? Whenever we are in ambition, we are in the, we are in the crab race. We are in the rat race. We are being crabs. We want to pull others down to go up. Or we are all constantly running so that others do not catch us. But when we develop a meaning in our life in whatever we are doing, then the rat race stops because you are doing what you are doing because you want to do it. So there is no reason to run. You will do your best under any circumstances. So if your best is less than what the other guy can do, so be it. It doesn't matter. Why? Because you have done your best. So you're not in competition anymore. When I bring meaning into my life, the competition totally drops. There is no question of any competition. When we make the shift to meaning, we see the absurdity of ever being able to retire from whom we are. I've always appreciated Picasso's observation on evaluating ourselves on the basis of what we do. While I work, he said, I leave my body outside the door, the way Muslims take off their shoes before entering the mosque. Three, we can treat our work like that by leaving our body outside and letting our soul do. So again, what is happening here? 
that that small ego that small consciousness which does not know everything we leave that outside the door and allow the universal consciousness to operate us so that we actually get into the flow and do what needs to be done rather than being a hindrance and creating resistance around us number 3 who i am is what others think of me throughout life we are bombarded by ego messages attempting to convince us that our worth comes from the observations and opinions of others once again this false self proclaims as truth that something or someone external to us is responsible for our validation and again it's necessary to remind ourselves who we truly are we are divine pieces of the whole individualized expressions of god created out of the great void our authentic self is the same as that which it came from our connection to our divine self remains healthy and strong as long as we recognize and repudiate the false idea that validation of our self esteem is external to our being so again here the concept is of looking good so wanting praise wanting uh, a thappa by someone else outside you you understand instead of being your authentic self that what is coming from a deeper state of your own consciousness and being and doing that that making that connection and we are part of that expanded state of consciousness we are jo apne geeta mein bolte hain aham brahmasmi i am a part of that divine consciousness so if i can align with that consciousness automatically things will start moving from me so i do not need thappa i do not need validation from anything external to me but again now the, you see there's a very thin line dividing when i say i do not need validation from anyone else what state of consciousness are you operating from are you operating from right side of the grid or the left side of the grid if you are operating from the left side of the grid then i don't need validation from anyone else could be an egoistic uh, uh, concept also but when i come from humility compassion and love it can say that yes i am not i do not need validation from others i will do what my heart tells me to do i will be my authentic self there's a very big distinction when you are operating from the left side and the right side of the grid unfortunately it's true that we are taught from an early age to believe the opinions of others more than our own opinions of ourselves our parents siblings friends and teachers in some cases everyone in our young lives are held in higher esteem than we are we are convinced that if anyone in those groups disapproves of us we should respect his or her viewpoint over our own this immersion in the solve false teachings of the ego gradually erodes our sense of worth causing us to doubt our divinity so again over here self one second so it is true that we are taught from an early age to believe the opinion of others more than our own opinion so over here i say that the tools that we are learning in the monro programs are very very helpful because we can go into that expanded state and actually ask that question over there and receive an answer the more you do it the more powerful it will become for you so you will get guidance you'll get guidance from a higher state of consciousness rather than from the ego ego based state of consciousness of people around you because they also are not connected unless you are really working with a spiritual master or a guru who is jacked in or he is connected with that higher state of consciousness and has the ability or the vision or the height of vision to be able to actually perceive what you are here for most of the other people are operating from their own ego so in awareness the idea is empowerment that giving you the tools to go into those states so that you can connect to that higher state of your own consciousness and listen to your own opinion from that higher state rather than listening to opinions of people around you self esteem stems from internally held positive beliefs about ourselves not from the approval of others 
Ego's worldly survival guide dictates that we are physical beings without a core spirituality. It pursues the false idea that our value is determined by what others choose to think about us. If we truly know who we are, we can ignore those ego messages and simply regard the opinions of our fellow humans for what they are, simply their opinions. So again, we have been given two I'm... years. We've been given two years and one mouth. So listen to what the other guy is saying, but it doesn't mean that you have to take it internally and too hard. So again, the, first, the second, fourth agreement, do not take things personally. So listen, if it serves you, take it and use it. If it doesn't, you do not need to take it personally. So again, we need to be very clear that our state of self-worth is something that we need to create for ourselves. If we depend on others to create it for us, huge problem. Okay, because what is happening again, you're putting your happiness in the other guy's hand, which is not a very, very uh, nice thing to do. Unfortunately, ego tries more often than not quite successfully to ward off our awareness of our spiritual nature. Unaware of its influence, we spend a lot of time trying to win the approval of everyone we meet. When we don't receive that approval, we begin to internalize those external assessments and expend large chunks of our life trying to be what we think someone else wants us to be. So now, what is happening over here? When we are looking for approval from the other guy, then we have to be what that other guy wants us to be. But is it your authentic self? Yes. A true master or a guru who is truly a guru will guide you to being your authentic self. They are not going to force their opinion on you, but they will always look at your higher good. What is it that is valuable to you? What will make things work for you? That is what is the most important thing over here. Okay. But again, when we operate from that ego, egocentricity, we do not realize that many times we are operating from that egocentricity, which is taking us off the path. Because we are wanting to do things to prove things to others rather than doing what is actually meant for us to do. Now, the universe is constantly throwing out options for us. If we do not take those options, then who's the big idiot? We are. And again, if you see the four S's, okay, if it has come by itself, is it easy for you to do? Is it, the, is it for the greater good? And are you accepting it? Becomes very important in this thing. Believing that who we are is defined by what other people think of us cripples the joyful spontaneity of our authentic self. If others disapprove and their opinion defines us, then we modify ourselves to shrink from view. Our image of ourselves is located in them. And when they reject us, we are, we no longer are at all. The ego's way of dealing with this dilemma is to adapt to everyone else's opinions. If they think we are stupid, we attempt to convince them to think otherwise by trying to be the person they want us to be. We cease to exist except as a reflection of what others think. So again, if we are going to adapt to what they are wanting us to be, then we are not being our authentic self. And that is where the problem starts. Having a bigger vision of what is there, going into that altered state of consciousness to understand why exactly we have come here, that becomes extremely important. Because when we are living at feeling fulfilled, if we are not on the path that we have come here to do or to achieve, we will never be happy. It is impossible. The fact is that you are, who you are, has absolutely nothing to do with any thoughts or opinions that exist in anyone else in this world. Period. That person whose approval you desperately sought could change his mind tomorrow. And instead of thinking that you're intelligent, talented, and beautiful, might decide you're a foolish dolt who's unappealing to be around. So 
So again, the opinion of others is constantly fickle. There is no permanence in that. So when there is no permanence in something, why should you give value to that particular thing? Because if you're valuing something which is not stable, then you become unstable. If you listen to your authentic self, you will be completely unaffected by such judgments. However, if your false self dominates your thinking, you will be miserably affected. This is how ego lures you into disregarding your authentic self. So the ego is constantly wanting to get control. Okay. When you operate from your authentic self, the ego loses control. So the ego will always try to pull you this way. Your authentic self is not going to pull you. It is something that you need to connect with. So you have to be aware. That's where awareness starts coming in. You have to be uh, consciously aware of what is happening around you. What are the uh, what is the universe throwing at you? What are the tantrums or what are the the uh, the uh, the patterns that you are stuck in, like a record player? Okay, we need to transcend them and drop the ego. The ego is what actually keeps us in those patterns. The moment we drop ego, we will start getting out of those uh, patterns or those control dramas. When approval seeking is the guiding principle of life, it's virtually impossible to achieve a loving relationship with another human being. We can't give away what we don't have. We can't give love and respect to others when we have to find it for ourselves in the judgments of others. Ego contributes to a constant state of fear, confusion and unhappiness. So again, again we go back to Celestine prophecy. We need to give and the other person needs to automatically give us. That is when the world will start going round and it will grow. But if I'm trying to, if it is a power game and I'm trying to absorb from the other guy, grab from the other guy, steal from the other guy, then that love will not grow. Okay. And if I'm trying to steal, that means I don't have, I'm operating from lack. And if I'm operating from lack, then I don't have to give. So unless I can give, how can I get? Okay. So it's a, it's a syndrome where you first have to give and allow the other person to give. So what does all of this approval seeking and low self-esteem have to do with ambition? The short answer is that we are taught to pursue the approval and validation of virtually everyone in positions of authority throughout our life with as much ambition as possible. Ambition almost always means putting our own life and opinions in the background. We learn to please parents, teachers, professors, authority figures and bosses. And how is this accomplished? By ranking their opinions above our own. This is a process that's performed day in, day out, month in, month out and year in, year out, often on a subconscious level. The result is an ego-based false self. So it's the belief system, that box, that is shoved into us from the day that we are born. This is right, this is wrong. Don't do this, do this. No, no, no. All the time children are hearing that. They're not allowed to really flower into their own authentic self. When we give more credence to the opinions of others, than to our own self-assessments, we deny the very wisdom that created us. The more we integrate these egoistic beliefs, the more we tend to believe in our own self-importance. Our drive to accumulate and achieve ultimately causes us to forget that our intrinsic value is our connection to our spiritual self. In other words, our connection to our source of being becomes obscured in favor of pleasing ego's ideas that we are what other people's ego thinks of us. So again, this is a totally materialistic view, right? We are set into achieving, we are set into acquiring, we are set into doing what others are wanting us to do rather than being our spiritual self, our deep state of consciousness, that higher state of consciousness, 
which actually tells us what are we here to achieve and do this has been a significant lesson for me to learn over the year when i speak or write i encounter opinions that vary from my own i know that if i speak to a thousand people there will be a thousand separate opinions of me in that audience my reputation isn't located in me it's in the people who read and listen to what i have to say consequently i've learned not to be concerned about my reputation since it isn't located in me i put my attention on my own character instead of how others view me so again he is looking at himself he is really not concerned about what other people think because he has brought meaning into his life he shifted from ambition to meaning so he is really not dependent on the opinion of others because everyone has their own opinion right but i need to create my own opinion of myself which is the most important thing and you cannot lie to yourself because any time that you are conscious any time that you are doing something if you are doing something wrong if you are doing something right who's the guy who's present you so if you are doing something wrong you know that you are doing maybe no one else is there but you know so how impeccable are you with your word it doesn't mean that in in front of someone else it means to yourself also how impe- impeccable is your word to word to yourself which is the most important thing forget your uh, you are keeping your word to someone else what are you doing for yourself that is becoming very important to me my primary relationship in life is to my source of being to god if you will do not imagine that anyone can have true faith in god who has not faith in himself so now this is, is important saying, right now if i don't have faith in myself how can i have faith in anything else okay this is extremely important to me is a saying from paramananda which strongly resonates with me if i choose to give up faith in myself by listening to the entreaties of my ego then i cannot have faith in my source of being they are always intertwined yeah so i need to connect with my source i do not need to operate from that egoistic state of mind these first three components of ego who i am is what i have what i do and what others think of me focus on its in- desire to build up our belief that this universe is all about us as well as that we are graded according to how much stuff we accumulate how much we accomplish and how many merit badges we manage to secure that is our acquisitions achievements and reputations are of primary significance The next three components of our ego portfolio are organized around the desire to stand out as original, unique and different from everyone and everything else in the universe. So again, who am I? What do I have? What do I do and what others think of me is something that we need to drop because all of these come from that small state of consciousness or the egoistic mind. I think we can stop here. Yeah, we are three fifteen exactly. Anyone, anything to say? Anyone, anything to say? Yeah. Um. I think. Um. Uh, am I audible? Yeah. Nidhi, can you have your video? Yeah. 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 Uh, yes uh, like this i think this point was very important that it needs to be elaborated uh, like you said you're doing uh, and non doing so this is always an um, point of argument like they say you have to go to gym one full of it god says you have to work you have to go for morning walk you have to do something to be fit and there is another school of thought which says you can uh, like by non doing something like that no 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 see you are mistaken the not doing is if we are talking about effortless doing 
we are not talking about effort full doing okay now let us say someone does not enjoy play, playing cricket then he has to force himself to go and play cricket now someone enjoys do, playing cricket then does he have to force himself to go and play cricket no so he no, is he is not now, doing right? in morning walk like in the people say you should if see again when you say should should uh, could right. can't won't all those okay. things imply doing now if it is happening if you really if you really are joyful in going for the morning walk you don't have to set an alarm you will get up yourself you will go and do yourself you will connect with nature and you will do it no normally where is the effort involved in that okay. yes but for for some it is effortful for some it is not so now when you are making it effortful is it putting you in the left side of the grid or the right side of the grid and what are we constantly saying that you need to operate from the left side or uh, the right side of the grid so the moment you are doing something from the right side of the grid it becomes effortless because you are enjoying doing it are you are you getting that so we we, we can't uh, force anything like uh, doing or not doing like we cannot force it's up to the person depends on the individual life actually what... now you don't enjoy doing something but as you keep doing it you start enjoying it okay. that can also happen right so in the beginning it may be effortful but slowly it becomes effortless for example you tell like your daughter or your son is doing maths okay first you need to force them now they start enjoying the process so much that now even if you tell them not to do it they'll do it why because right. it's no effort for them right mm -hmm. so the the idea is to shift from being effortful to effortless from doing to just happening from doing to being are you you get that shift here yes okay anyone else though, yeah. what it difficult so that no no it's not difficult you just have to be gentle with it and be watchful as to what are you doing and what state of consciousness are you doing with, doing it with whenever you find yourself doing things effortfully stop take a break shift your state of consciousness and then enjoy doing whatever you are doing so that's that that statement is there na do what you enjoy or enjoy what you do so if you are in resistance suppose you have to do something right now your resistance and you're constantly craving why i have to do this i have to do this now will that thing be joyful or you say oh i have got to do this and the universe has given me this opportunity let me do it and see what comes out of it right. now the the act is the same but what is the state of consciousness with which you are doing it will totally shift the value that you are creating with that particular activity in your life you get that Okay, how are you, Ji? Uh, Bhaiya, I I wanted to talk, ask you something about yesterday's uh, session, not yeah. the book. Can I? Yeah. Uh, Bhaiya, yesterday's session, what like he was? It, it almost reminded me of those old doctors in in India who could tell what was wrong with the person when they walked into the. Yeah, Clinic. so could it be something similar to that? Can be, but here he is saying that it's a learned technique, and they they are indicators. Yeah, and people can actually learn that. So even people can learn that all these, see, all these things are available for us to learn, provided we want to learn them, right? Ah, wo nadi vai dota tha. Ah, you should just see your nadi and say, "Ah, today you go to a palmist, he'll tell you that okay, you have a digestive problem." Okay. An astrologer will also tell you. We are going to have a talk on astrology also. 
So mm -hmm. he'll tell you that, okay, you'll get married at this time or this is the propensity. Again, probability. So everything is a probability. What is he saying? That this indicator is there and it shows that this may be a problem. Now you go and get it. Right. 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 No, that I have got. Huh. That's it. Nothing more than that. And Bhair, his first book yeah. also tells, uh, uh, has indicators as to uh, w uh, what indicates what uh, problem. Like, yeah, I yeah, love yeah. the psychological part he kept talking of, that it could be because of um, the thyroid, is because of the power, uh, you know, in the women power. that he's yeah. found. So, it, is that also in that first book or is it only I, in the see, second? That book is sitting on my shelf, it's right on my table right now. I haven't read it, okay? So, I'm not in a position to actually comment. But mm -hmm. having scanned through the book, I see that he's given the indicators and what are the connections. Oh, that's he has. I think it is there. Okay. To read okay. the book, the idea will be to read the yeah. book. Let me see if the PDF is available. Maybe we'll mm -hmm. take up that book next. Or oh, what? excellent. Excellent. Because we'll we'll that fascinated me about the emotional thing, how it could be yeah. connected. So, there are many ways. We have one book, The Body Talks, then The Anatomy of Illness. There are many books on this kind of thing. That today, yeah. if you're having an illness, what is the psychosomatic uh, effect and where it is coming from? Okay. Thank you, Bhai. We have quite a number of books in our library also. Yes, Sheetal? Yeah, Thanks, so Bhaiya. I want to ask this change of consciousness. Uh, you need to take your programs now uh, fast because I want to attend them, how to change your consciousness. Uh, I have attended that uh, Revolve with the Focus 10. Will that also help when you're putting that consciousness? 101%. So when you're shifting a state, you, you start operating in F10, you'll huh. find that your entire... Con what Jyoti is experiencing, that stillness of mind, Right. that is that is like F10. Okay. So we can do that and then Absolutely. rethink. Absolutely. Okay. So you got the encoding to go to F10. I'm right. going to do that again so that it will reinforce it for people. Okay. But you, you go into F10 using the reball. Huh. What is it? You're shifting your state of consciousness. Right. You can actually, so we can use it. Yeah, yeah absolutely. 101%. Okay. That's the idea. That's right. the part of the empowerment, right? That we, we, are, mm -hmm. we are explaining to you that see, this is a state of consciousness which you can achieve. Mm -hmm. Okay? Correct. Once you get there, what you can do there? Most mm -hmm. practices will take you to a state of consciousness, but they won't tell you what to do. Yes, correct. That's right. At times they don't even have a proper guidance that you are hitting that state of consciousness. Here yes. we are telling you, we in the programs, we actually make you create markers which will tell you that, okay, now I've hit this state of consciousness. Okay. So when I hit that state, it's like right. I'm awake right now. I can do something. Huh. I'm sleeping. Right. Yes. Two totally distinct states of consciousness. Correct. Now what I can do here, I can't do here. Absolutely what correct. That's right. Yeah. Okay. So the right. idea, what is the idea? That I have more states between. Now each mm. one of them is a specific state. Mm. So if I can go into that particular state and learn from experience that I can do this over here, now that becomes right. powerful for me, right? Yeah, absolutely correct. Yeah. You get that? So now yes. let's say I let, let's say focus 12 is a state of expanded mm. consciousness. Hmm. Where it's easy to get answers for yourself. Hmm. Now, what would be the right way to take? Should I go left or should I go right? Okay. Oh, okay. Do your programs fast now. <laughs> we really want to attend that. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Anyone else? Anything? Christine, you have something? Chitraji. Christine, you want to ask something? You've unmuted yourself. Okay. So then we meet at uh, uh, 3.45 for meditation. Yeah. Today we'll be doing so called no 9.15 today. We'll have 9.15 tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for joining. Ram, 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 Ram,